discuss various abiotic factors and other uh, issues. We had also discussed about uh, migraine, suspect, conformers, regulators. We are all regulators because we are homeothermic. Homeostasis occurs in us. Okay, there is a regulation of temperatures as well as osmoregulation. The osmotic concentration regulation takes place. So we had discussed that in the previous class. Today what we are going to discuss about is what are the adaptations that are there to overcome unfavorable conditions. Okay. So there are the various types of adaptations that we can see like morphological adaptations, physiological adaptations. Morphological is external part of it. Physiological is within the body mechanisms that we have. Behavioral adaptations. So these are things that you have to remember about the various adaptations that the organisms exhibit to overcome stressful environment or unfavorable conditions. Okay. So the adaptation in deserts, what are all the things that you have to notice is they have given certain examples, can go rat. Even in camels you can notice that they are going to have this oxidation of fat. They have excess of fat stored and whenever uh, there is lack of water available for many days together, they are going to oxidize the fat and utilize that for the water requirement. So even the camels have a hump, one hump camel or two hump camels. Battery and camels also we call it as. So where in the hump they store the fat in case of camels. Okay. That is the reason for months or weeks together they can survive without water in desert in drying conditions. So you have to understand water need is fulfilled by oxidation of fat. Okay. That is noticed in kangaroo right. And also they conserve water by uh, throwing out concentrated urine, not a lot of uh, water is lost during the urination process. So water is conserved. So urine would be concentrated urine. So in these animals which are residing in the deserts, these are some of the adaptations. Now adaptations of plants in deserts. So the plants which are living in desert conditions, we generally call them as zero plants. That is the water availability is less. So the zero pitted plants are found in the desert conditions like cactus varieties or other cactus species that you find or many of the plants which are found in deserts they have some unique traits like they have thick cuticle cuticle layer is thick that is a waxy layer which avoids the evaporation of water from the surface of the leaf okay this thick cuticle layer more than when compared to mesophilic plants the cuticle layer is more thick and you can feel these leaves are all a little leathery because of this critical layer. Okay. So sunken stomata, that is deep seated stomata. In the epidermis, if it is deep seated and inside and not on the surface, loss of water by transpiration is reduced. This is also an adaptation that is known as with plants. Okay. The GAN pathway, Crassulacean acid metabolic pathway, is found in the members of Crassulacea. Okay, I told you some of the examples like Kalanchu and other plants. You find in this Crassulacea members, the stoma is closed during daytime and it is open during night time. So during night time, uh, because of evaporation or temperature factors, the transpiration would be lesser. Okay, but during daytime it would be more. So that is how the stoma is closed during daytime and it is open during night time in Crassulacea members. Uh, Crassinacy family, members of this family, they exhibit that. So, and they are very well adapted for desert condition. You can find many Crassinacy members in the desert conditions because of their Crassinacy acid metabolic pathway, which is a unique type of photosynthetic pathway that they have. Okay. Then, uh, leaves are reduced in some of the succulent and fleshy plants like cactus varieties, I told you, open shear. You might have seen that the stem is flat and open. Okay. Leaves are modified as spines. Well, what is the major purpose? The purpose of leaf is to undergo photosynthesis and synthesize food. But leaf also undergoes transpiration and means 95% of 
loss of water through transpiration, through foliar transpiration. In order to avoid that, the leaves are dorsoventrally, uh, the leaves are absent and they are present as spines, the stems are flattened. Okay. And they are green in color, green flattened stems, which take up the function of the photosynthesis. That is how they infiltrate their environment without losing water. Okay. So in open shear you can notice this uh, condition, they are given given the example there. Now adaptations of animals in cold climatic conditions. What might be the adaptations of animals? According to Alan's role, so the animals which are found in the uh, cold regions, they are going to have shorter ears and smaller legs. So that their body surface available for loss of weight is lesser. Okay. So the shorter ears and uh, shorter legs is going to help them in reducing the loss of heat. The body heat should not be lost. So in, uh, especially in uh, freezing conditions, cold conditions, they have to conserve the body heat also. So they have this modification. They have shorter ears and smaller legs in case of animals which are uh, living in the cold regions like Arctic regions and other places. Okay, the seeds of polar animals, polar seeds, they are found in the uh, polar regions, not for South Pole. Okay. The seeds of polar region, they are going to have blubber. Even males have blubber below their skin. Blubber is a thick layer of fat. So fat acts as an insulation mechanism for them. It prevents the loss of weight as well as it prevents the entry of the colder conditions. Okay, it is an insulator, neither a conductor of heat nor conductor of lower temperatures. But the insulator it prevents loss of heat from their body and they conserve heat. Okay, so this you can see in the seeds of polar seas and waves, you find blubber, a thick layer of fat below the skin, which acts as an insulator and prevents the loss of heat. Then there is adaptations in higher altitudes above the sea level, greater than 3500 meter level, above the sea level, what you can notice is many of us undergo altitude sickness. The symptoms of altitude sickness are nausea, you feel like vomiting, vomiting sensation, okay? fatigue, you become tired and there is also heart palpitations that takes place. These are all symptoms of high altitudes, okay, altitude sickness. Now, people who are residing in these places, hill stations and other places, higher level of altitudes can compare to sea level, how do they overcome this altitude sickness? So you find that people who are residing in high altitude, they have more number of RBC production, red blood cell production, so that they can absorb more amount of, uh, less amount of oxygen available at higher level. Whenever you are climbing a uh, hill, you grasp more breath because it, as you go higher and higher, the oxygen level gets reduced. Okay, so that you have to remember about. So the increased RBC production is seen in people who are residing in such higher altitudes. Then there is also the binding capacity of hemoglobin with oxygen is very less. So in order to overcome this. Uh, deficiency in higher altitudes, the breathing rate is higher. The breathing rate is, rate of breathing is higher. So that we take up more amount of oxygen. Normally we 16 to 17 times we breathe per minute. Okay, but the rate of breathing will be more when you are at higher altitudes. It is almost like you are gasping for breath. Okay, so you have to remember that is how we uh, overcome this uh, efficiency of binding capacity of hemoglobin with oxygen by breathing in more of oxygen. The rate of breathing will be more. Okay. Then some of the behavioral adaptations to overcome stressful environment is known as in animals. They are like desert lizards or sometimes even snakes. Snakes are also reptiles. You know, in winter season you might, be far, you might find them basking on the boulders or rocks. Okay, they try to absorb the 
uh, heat, plastic in the sun, okay, to absorb heat. That is one way that desert results are confirmed as that is their temperature is dependent upon the external environment. They are not regulators. They are confirmers. Cold blooded animals, you know about that. So they bask in the sun and try to absorb the heat. Or if it is too much of heat is there, what do they do? They go to the moisture regions or shade regions. So moving away from the heat. So that is what we notice during summer seasons. And some of them in order to work at the uh, high amount of temperatures that is there, what they do is they undergo burrowing. They burrow and go underground. They go into the soil to reduce the uh, surface heat. So it won't reach. The soil temperatures will always be lower than that of the atmospheric temperatures. Okay. They burrow to overcome this uh, above the soil to be that is higher to them. So they also exhibit this burrowing mechanism during the summer season. These are all the ways that they overcome by behavioral changes, not by uh, external modifications or physiological modifications. It is by behavioral changes they are overcoming the stressful environment. That is how they cope the stressful environment.